Hello and welcome to Netbunker Studios. In this video, I'm continuing my M32 edit series, and today we're looking at the main section of the channel page. Uh, I'll also be looking at DCAs and mute groups and all of that output stuff. So let's get right into it. Okay, this is the mains page of the channels. So let's just start left to right as we do. We got our main left right, so this button right here uh, is a toggle that determines whether or not the channel sends to your main left right output. So you can turn it off and then it no longer goes to the main left right output, but it can still go to the mono output and any other auxiliary outputs and buses and everything. Just doesn't go to the main left right. I'll turn that back on. Here you have panning between the two, so you can pan all the way one way. You'll see these faders changing. They're a representation, you can't change them. Uh, physically here, they're just a representation of uh, how the cha audio channels, how the audio travels. You'll see also if I move this fader down, they come down as well. Again, they're a representation of how the audio is traveling. You can turn this up and you'll see it goes up. So yeah, so that's that pan there, left to right, determining if you want it. All the way left, all the way right, or anywhere in between. Then you've got your uh, mono center bu button. This is very similar to the main stereo one. It turns it determines whether the channel goes to the um, mono center bus or mono center channel, um, often used for either a sub or a center speaker. This uh, configuration setup is a sub. Um, so you can turn that up or down, you can turn it off. Um, similarly, that's similar, you can pull up the subwoofer with sends on fader as a bus, and you can use the mute buttons on that. This is the same thing as that. Then we've got this. Here is the panning mode. This is a global setting, so you can't change it here. I also think you need to be connected to a desk to change it, but that is there, um, just to tell you. Over here is the group assignments, which I believe um, only applies to the first six channels. Um, what is it? First eight channels. So the first eight channels have this group assignments uh, section where they can, be a plot, they can be put in auto mixing groups. Uh, there's two, there's an X and Y group. You put them in an auto mix group and the desk takes care of auto mixing those channels. If you have like multiple speakers on at once, it will lower and raise volume based on who's speaking. You can give each channel a different weighting to determine if one mic is more important than the others. You can give it a higher weighting and it will go through louder. Uh, you can determine if it's in the X group, or the Y group, you'll see how many... I was looking for this earlier, but yeah, so you can see it's the first date because they have this little light there showing you which group they're in. Uh, I believe you can, you can only have them in one. So you can have four in X and four in Y, or six in X and two in Y, completely up to you. That's the group assignments. Next we have our DCA groups. So that's a digitally controlled amplifier. Uh, this basically means that all of the channels in that group are then controlled by the DCA fader and mute button. That's all there is to a DCA, there's no configuration pages like the ones I've been looking at over the series so far. There is just mute and a fader, which is different from a subgroup, which I mentioned in an earlier video. So I have this in DCA3, you can have all those there. If we go to this page here, at the end, switch views for you. So you'll see at the end here we have a lot of DCAs, this is where you can change what they look like and their names, and then they come up here in the colors. You'll also see them down here. Um, showing you which uh, DCAs they're in. You can see my whole thing was color coded. Lastly, we have the mute groups. You can 
add it which channels are in each DCA. Lastly, then we have the mute groups. Uh, one to six. I don't use any, but you know you can turn them on. Then it'll show down here what mute groups are in, and again you've got the edit button. 32 channels and all the buses and matrixes, left and right, and six mute groups. You know, same thing. Uh, I want to talk about so then your main page here is your front of house mixing. You can also go to the main center, which is your sub mixing. Here, if we look at this page, you'll see it's turned off for mono center. Like I said, that's the mute button there. All these off button, off on buttons in uh, buses and stuff are the essentially mute buttons. That's how they're represented on the console. I don't know why Midas and Ranger chose to represent them separately, differently here. Um, uh, let me also talk about, um, I'm also going to talk about matrixes. So this matrix is, so matrixes are sort of like bus groups for bus groups. So you can send, um, outputs and mix different outputs together into matrixes. So there's six matrixes, you can link them together or have them separate. They can go at any output or um, you can have the front of house. So this one is for a separate mother room or parents room, cry room that the front of house goes directly into. And then this sends out a separate outfit for that. Here you can see, I can go to sends. You'll see your six matrices, how they're traveling and wherever they're, what setting they're in. This is very similar to the sends page on the inputs. You can also come down to all, right to the end, and you've got your front of house, uh, and where it's sending, you can see it's sending all the way to Love's Room, and to Matrix 3 and 4. Subwoofer doesn't go anywhere, it's a bit upset. That's, matrices don't send anywhere either, they just go out outputs. You can apply different processing to them, they're a great way for, for live streams and overflow rooms and all that. It's a great um, another mix option to mix buses together or send front of house out other outputs um, via and having some control over the fading, faders and mute of the separate output. Uh, that's all I want to talk about. Again, you got your front of house here uh, with you know, very similar to the inputs. You've got your main page, EQ, dynamics, matrix ends. There's a few different things. You got, I got a graphic equalizer on this. There's some things that you can't do to the, you can't put a gate on the front of house. You can have compression, you can have EQ, you can have sends. The reason I got this cut down here is because of the speakers that I have set up for this scene. Then we're on the higher range. And then of course I got the subwoofer in the lower range. And yeah, so the desk takes care of that. Sends, you can have front of house and sub in DCAs and mutes and they're going through different effects. That's all that. I'll get on to effects and everything in another video. Okay guys, I hope you've really all enjoyed that video. Uh, I hope you learned lots about the main section and DCAs, mute groups, and all the fun things there. Matrix sends, all very important. If you do have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you can answer anyone's questions down there, go right ahead. You know, we have a great community here. So like, subscribe, turn on notifications, so you're uploaded when I do future videos, explaining effects, and other routing options. I have some social media down as well, where I um, post about other things I'm doing and things happening in the audio sphere. So, go do some audio.